Hello, it is November 2nd. Welcome to Soulprint Intuitive Tarot. Mercury is retrograde. It's kicking my butt. It actually falls in, I think it's the ninth house, my ninth house of communications. So I'm thinking we can probably expect a few bumpy weeks here. All right, so yesterday I tried in vain to um, do a recap of the week that was, and that just was not going to work for me. So this morning I decided that I was going to try a, a, another approach and I did, um, it's sort of this thing I do. People have all kinds of different names for it. For me, I call it floating up into the ethers. So what I do is I go into a very light meditation and then I just, my energy just rises to a higher vibration. Um, than the vibration here on earth, which then allows me to access um, information that, it is, you know, often is more fluid, right? I just get a more fluid read. So um, I decided to do that this morning. And what I was looking for was going forward, looking ahead, looking forward, as opposed to looking back at the week that was, it was a horror. We all know it. We saw it. We witnessed it. We survived the month of October. Yay us. But I wanted to sort of start taking a look going forward. And there was a couple of things that sort of triggered this. The first one, um, <laughs> the other day, Trump came out with this notion that he was going to have a fireside, you know, reading of the transcript. And then I watched all of these talking heads on television saying, oh, let that be true. Oh, please let him do that. I would love for him to do that. Assuming, and I don't know why, wrongfully assuming, given the track record, that he would actually play by the rules and he would actually read the transcript as it, or not transcript, the notes as they actually are. And you know what? He's not going to, if that transpo transpires, I don't think it's going to, but if he did, he wouldn't read it correctly. He would embellish. He was, it's impossible for him to stay on track. So I don't know why anybody would think he could actually read a couple of page document and not put things in there. And this is the point. It doesn't matter if after he's done it, um, a bunch of people, you know, a bunch of commentators are screaming, you know, that's not accurate. That's not what was said. This is, what does it matter? He has his soundbite for Fox News. He has his soundbite for rallies. Don't ever expect him to play by the same rules that somebody else would. It's not going to happen. And the other thing that um, caused me to think that it was time to look like forward was um, there was a poll that came out yesterday. So in um, July, with Republican voters, he was sitting at a 87% approval rating. As of um, October, when they just did this poll, it just got released yesterday, I think. He is down to 74% approval among Republicans. That is like a 13% drop in just a handful of months. I mean, August, September, you know, two and a half, three months. So that is really, really interesting because clearly, you know, What's going on is there's more and more illumination to what actually is going on. The American people are starting to at least get some of the story. All right. So what I did was I just went on this little floating up to the ether thing this morning. I have my list of the information that I have come back with. Um, so settle in, have a sip of coffee, and I'm just going to go through it. There's probably about eight points I'm going to make. Um, and, and for this, I just literally don't need my card. So you get to look at me yakking at you for the whole 20 minutes or however long this is going to take. Okay. The first thing I wanted to check on was what that approval rating looks like as we end, as we come to the end of the <clears throat> public hearings. And I'm getting a number that is in the mid 
50s. Somewhere around 57% is going to be his approval rating among Republicans by time those um, hearings, public hearings, so as the information gets out, um, wraps up. Um, I should tell you, when I do this floating into the ether things, what I'm looking for is most likely scenario, uh, you know, the, the thing that has the highest percentage, if you will, of manifesting. So he's looking at a really significant drop in his approval rating among Republicans. I can only shudder to think how low it's going to go, you know, with the Democrats. So, or how high, no, low. Okay. Um, the Democrats are going to take the Senate in the next election and understand that this all requires hard work and engagement and those positive thoughts and being proactive and busy and, and, you know, pushing and fighting for what it is you want. But as it sits right now, um, the Democrats looks like they're going to take the Senate. And not only that, it looks like some high-ranking senators or some well-established senators, some old-time senators, are actually not going to win their races. So, again, let's look, you know, let's look at the Mitch McConnells. Let's look at um, the Lindsey Grahams. There's, and there's a lot, like I'm, I'm getting five or six that are actually not potential, that could potentially actually lose their Senate seat by time this is said and done. Because what's going to happen is you're going to get out, end up in this situation where Republicans are going to say, why didn't you stop him? That, what was the matter with you? Why were you telling us that everything was fine when it so clearly wasn't even close to fine? So they're going to take a bit of a hit. It looks as if, okay, so with Trump, um, when I ask what, you know, the most likely or the most potential outcome is with Trump, I keep getting Nixon's face sort of superimposed over Trump's face. So what that's telling me is the most likely potential is going to be where a group of Republicans walk into his office at some point and say, Donnie, you don't have the votes. You're not going to have the votes. You don't have enough popularity with the Republicans. We are basically jumping ship um, because we are the rats we are. And so um, leave office and do it right now. And... I, I'm not saying that's that's what's going to happen, but that at this point appears to be the most likely potential. And at that point, I have long said that you are then going to have uh, Trump come down with some mysterious like illness, some health crisis that forces him to resign his office without actually admitting that he's leaving because his own party has turned their back on him. Once that happens, um, then he is completely exposed to the legal system. So, you know, and I've, I have said for a year, a year now, that Trump is going to spend the rest of his life and his assets trying to um, turn his name you know, to previous glory, right? Um, he's going to be all about building the brand up and trying to protect the brand and protect his image and protect his name. And so he's going to fight, fight, fight. And frankly, that never gets him anywhere because he fights, fights, fights until it gets down to the crunch and then he settles the lawsuit. So there you have it. Um, one way or another, somehow or another, Barr is going to get removed from office. I do not know if that is going to happen um, while Trump is still in office or, or while the Republicans still hold the House, or sorry, hold the White House. Um, but he's, he's leaving. He either gets removed or he leaves of his own accord, but he's going, going, gone. Um... The next president. It's going to be a Democratic president. As of right now, what I am seeing is this. The 
Okay. As a result of all the stuff that's going to come out in public, more and more people are going to realize, like really, really start to realize, and that includes those of us who have actually been paying attention to what's been going on. People are going to start to realize how much damage has been done under the Trump presidency. How literally how much was destroyed, how much was clawed back. Um, the relationships that have just been detonated with allies. And more and more people are going to start looking at not who is going to give me the best health care, but who is going to get us out of this mess? Who can actually fix where we're at right now? Um, and I very clearly feel <clears throat> that the next president is only going to be president for four years. Um, and I'm not sure, maybe he's just exhausted after trying to fix so much stuff, or she. But there's definitely, it's a short term, and they're leaving of their own accord. It's sort of like, I've done what I can do. It's time for others to, you know, pick up the mantle and run with it. Um, and that this president, this Democratic president that I see, is going to have a black or brown vice president, most likely a female vice president. And um, finally, I, oh, okay, so as a result, I'm seeing vice, I'm seeing Pence actually becoming president for a short period of time. So, but he's going to very much be a lame duck president. He's going to be under a lot of scrutiny. And ultimately, stuff is going to come out about him that isn't going to reflect well on him. And so whatever tattered pieces are left of his reputation or his standing, they also are destroyed. <clears throat> um, yeah, it, absolutely. There's going. He's not going to have any push behind him, any strength behind him. He's just going to be, you know, holding, holding the place open. Um, and that, you know, that's just going to be a very, very interesting situation. But mark my words, the Republicans. Once Trump leaves office, it, however that turns out, um, the Republicans are going to do everything they can, everything in their power to ensure that Pence gets into office. They will do whatever, whatever it takes to keep Nancy Pelosi as Speaker of the House to assuming that position. It, it's not going to happen. I know we would all love to see it happen. I don't believe it's going to happen. It very much looks like the Republicans will do whatever it takes. Again, they're going to go with this whole narrative of, listen, there's a Republican in the White House. Let the electorate decide. Let the electorate decide. And what they're not quite understanding is by time that electorate is deciding, there are not going to be a significant number of Republicans who are interested in actually holding the White House because it's basically like everything is going to be so wrecked. They're almost going to have to go back to the drawing board. All right. And um, one of the other things that I just took a quick peek at was um, Putin. And I, I'm going to say this, um, I would say within three years, he is no longer in office. And I would suggest that he probably needs to be mindful of his physical safety, health and security. So it looks like he's in for a wee little bit of a bump also. Okay, so um, that's kind of what I know from my little journey up into the ethers. I am going to pull out my cards. I've got a few minutes left. So I'm going to pull out my cards and just see if I can get some additional insight, some guidance, some, some something that um, 
either confirms this reading or gives us additional information about the information that I have received and that has been passed on. So, uh, here we go. I'm dropping cards all over the place. When I bring um, the camera down, I will in a, in a minute or so, um, I have two interesting things sitting in front of me in terms of crystals that you don't typically see as, as part of what I do here. One is my handy dandy crystal ball. Um, I do not read a crystal ball so much as like every other tool that um, intuitives use. It is um, an energy channeler. It helps to focus and bring into focus um, the energies that you're you know you're looking to access and the other one is this absolutely gorgeous piece of lemurian crystal i don't know if you're gonna be able to see it but this crystal has literally ridges that um run up and down the side of it and what the belief is is that this came from the lemurian civilization which was before Atlantis, there was Lemurian. But the history of the world is written in the ridges. Um, and sometimes if you're very, very lucky and you have a very pure heart, the Lemurian crystals will open up to you and let you access some of that history or the, the actual writings. Um, so that's why this is sitting here as I, as I took sort of this dive forward so come on down and let's just see what um what the cards would like to tell us this morning i have a question put that out there okay and so my question is um i think we're going to look for additional insights or guidance with regards to the information that has been passed on so far in this reading. All right, final shuffle. Um, additional insights or guidance, additional insights or guidance, additional insights or guidance. A little bit of space here. Oh, there's full front and center. So it's always nice and um, the Donald makes an appearance. Yeah, right now he's charging ahead. He's starting to recognize how heavy the burden is. He's starting to realize that maybe some of his overseas contacts, maybe some of the stuff he did, ultimately wasn't in his own best interest. I was watching, just as an interesting aside, I was watching Nicole Wallace yesterday, and she was saying that some of her contacts, uh, so Republican contacts in the West Wing, have told her that Trump believes, this is not rhetoric on his part, both publicly, more importantly, and privately. Trump absolutely insists that phone call with Ukraine was perfect. To this day, even as it is drawing him closer and closer towards being impeached, he still thinks that there was nothing wrong with doing what he did and having that conversation um, with uh, Zelensky in the Ukraine. And if you had happened, if you happen to have watched or caught Rachel Maddow's show last night, um, there was some, I think it was reported by the Washington Post that um, in fact, Trump had done something very, very similar with the previous Ukrainian president and that that president actually did bow to um, Trump's wishes. And it had something to do with a prosecutor. 
um, looking looking into something or or I'm, I'm not clear anymore, but uh, it was really interesting. So maybe part of the reason that Trump is so convinced that this is perfectly fine and wonderful is because he actually has already done it once. So if you did it once and got away with it, then you would have a very hard time understanding why you couldn't do it the second time. And then that got you into trouble. So that's just an interesting aside. But, you know, he's on some level, he's starting to recognize that there's things that are going to come out that maybe aren't going to look so good for him. But in typical Trump fashion, he is going to absolutely plow ahead um, in the manner in which, you know, the fool conducts his life. Yeah, oh my goodness, look at here. He's showing up twice. And again, a lot of burdens, a lot of defensive postures, ultimately ending in um, disappointment. Communications are going to be very effective in getting the messages out. You're going to have people reacting with really strong emotions to some of the information coming out. For those of you who are worried or concerned about sort of civil riots breaking out in the, in the streets, I really, really, I have checked on this several times over the course of time, and I'm not seeing it happening, and in part because if I'm anywhere near or close to correct, and he ends up with a approval rating in the 50s among Republicans, the Republicans in and of themselves are a shrinking party, he's almost not going to have the force of the momentum to actually create or sus have something sustained that is actually um, dangerous, okay? So don't be concerned about that. This is more about people looking into how they're feeling about the betrayal of the United States. People starting to look at the amount of money that has been wasted and the financial information that has not come out on him. So that's interesting. Oopsie. Okay, well, I don't need to lay out any more cards after this, literally. He has a change of fortune coming very, very swiftly that is going to end in the end of this chapter of his life. So whatever he is today, not so sure he's going to be that in a few months. I do not know the timing of this. As you know, um, the timing is very difficult. But I will say this, that um, I want to say that the time between now and the new year is going to be the most insightful, informative. There's going to be a lot of um, communications, a lot of information coming out. It is also going to be in some ways the most precarious because the more Trump is threatened, the more it looks bad for him, the more you're going to have really, you know, kind of volatile behavior from him and you're going to have people scrambling to try to harness him and so that's sort of, you know, where, where you're at, right? You're in a place where the next couple of months are going to be a time that you need to be mindful and alert and aware to what's going on. And those of you, bless your souls, who love to contact your reps, this is the time to do it. And, um, and really, you know, make your feelings known. So... There we have it. I am hoping um, that this reading more than makes up for the one that didn't surface yesterday. Um, it has been very insightful for me. It was very interesting to me, some of the information I got. I hope that you also feel that way. And again, before I wrap, thank you so much for the likes and the subscribes and the comments. Um, they're all wonderful. They are so appreciated. I'm so grateful and glad that we have found each other and that um, you are receiving the information that I am able to access and pass along. And I'm most pleased that it has a sort of calming 
effect that there is some clarity with it. Um, so I'm, I could not be more thrilled. So thank you for everything, each and every one of you. Um, for your information, the little box below does have some information. If you are interested or looking to get a private reading, um, I do have openings after kind of the second full week of February. So um, please let me know if that is something you are interested in. Until next time, enjoy your weekend, take care, be well, and we'll see you really soon. Bye.